For most people, a mirage is something that rises from the desert. Something unreal, too good to be true. It's a distortion of light, something that can't possibly be. Another kind of mirage is that life will always be as it is now. A roof over your head, a successful job, a happy family. Two years ago, my daughter was born. I took time off from my job as a filmmaker to spend more time with her. Money ran out. Then the economy crashed. Jobs and TV dried up. We were broke and I was unemployed. The pressure was on to do something, anything. So I went for the easy money. Found out the true meaning of risk. Hey, Matt Gallagher. Welcome to the world. Hey, man. Haven't seen you around lately. What's uh, what's going on tonight? Do you got a game going on? Oh yeah, we're rocking tonight. We got a great game. Yeah. So I got, I got like a little five ten. I'm gonna be <laughs> dinner. We're gonna have a good night. All right, man. I think I'll definitely pop by tonight if I can. Okay, cool. Yeah, okay. we're rocking tonight. So. Okay. I was always pretty good at poker, but now I'm trying to make a living at it. I meet these strangers in illegal card rooms all over the city. Okay. <laughs> the locations are well guarded, both from the cops and the criminals who know that there's a lot of cash in the room. I play No Limit Texas Hold'em, a perfect combination of skill, probability, and some say luck. Each player gets dealt two cards. Then comes the community cards. The flop, the turn, the river. The best five card hand wins the pot. How much is it, 95 more? If I call 95, you're gonna put me out. You might as well push all in there. Ah! Now you have to show it, man. I got gotcha. you. Oh, yeah. My goal is to win a couple of big hands each night. Happy to walk away with 500 bucks profit for a day's work. Most of the grinders in this room play poker full time. Oh my God, flush her with a pair. Guys like Andre. What did you have there? I'll tell you right now, to me, grinding is A having no source of income but poker. Dealer, drop a seven, you flopped it. Dealer, I need a seven, one time dealer. Meaning you are playing poker, not for entertainment, for a source of income. That to me is grinding. Oh, nine then, nine, I'm gonna get happy with a chop. Nine, fuck, man. If you lose in poker today, it's not like, oh, well, whatever, I still have enough to pay for the you know, milk and cheese and for the kid. No, that means you're screwed now. No, no, no! Oh, shit. Do that. How are you in? Check it. Oh, oh my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. One time. Okay, let's all open up to make no, it. No, 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 no. I opened up last time. I lost, bro. <laughs> I'll take Ace King suited over a blonde any day. Call me gay. Wow. Ship that shit. Yes! Don't oh, yeah. slow roll me, Marcus. Don't slow roll me. How would you call with? Force? Oh, you're sick. 
How do I win that? The second he said I, he has a pair, I thought I have no shot. <laughs> oh, jacket's going back on. Okay, Anybody we're here all night. Done? We're here all night, bro. We're here all night. Your money's good. <laughs> oh, oh, Mark, your money. I lo oh, I love your money, bro. Oh, I love your money. Your money's good. Oh, your money's good. Holy crap. Pocket fours, for sure. Pocket fours, eh? Ask me pocket fours. Oh, man. I'm telling you, Lee might have to drive. <clears throat> I can just, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pass out for a good five, six hours straight. No, but I can't, that's, a, that's the irony of my life. Power naps, you know, I'm all about power naps. Hour here, hour there. Which is why I'm out of shape. And I, it's not that I don't eat, it's not that I eat bad, right? I just, my hours are horrible and without sleep, that's like the number one, you know what I mean? That's, sleep is the number one uh, thing you need in order to get in shape. People don't, don't understand that. So over the city, like a city the size of Toronto, how many games are we talking? About? Oh my God. <laughs> You don't even want to know. <laughs> like, what you're talking about, like legit games, or even like like games in the houses, like home games. Like, what, like, what do you need to know right now? You know, like, because there's. I'm talking about the underground scene where people, you know, are working. Where people are ro working and playing poker. I'm gonna tell you right now. I mean, I don't even want to say this because I don't need to get shot out there. But there's over. And keep in mind, this is from what where I've been, right? I'm sure there's probably more. I would say, easily. Easily like a hundred, over a hundred games guaranteed, even over two hundred. If you want to be a degenerate, if you want to be a grinder, you just gotta non-stop play poker. <laughs> One of the grinders I meet who plays nonstop is Danny. Seven nights a week, you can find him at one of the clubs around town. Like me, he supports his family by playing on the ground. But he's a player with ambition for something more. doing right now I'm doing for my kids I'm trying to make the best life possible for them and this is the what you know the way I can go about it right now I'm, I'm, I'm fortunate enough to be able to play poker and you know fortunate enough that you know with a tournament win you're gonna get a whole lot of money in one shot so and some recognition to go along with it which I think really helps you get for uh, future tournament wins Danny's always looking for the big prize a payday that could change his life. He's entered this tournament with money he's won at the underground clubs. He's got to beat out 550 players to claim first prize of $300,000. Just think it's my time, man. You know what, I've, I've been playing well for the last three, four months. And, and I'm really zoned into this tournament. I don't. I think I'm playing really intelligently, and I think a lot of people aren't going to be as intelligent with their chips. There's going to be some some chips flying around. I'm just waiting to pick good spots, man. But I really feel like I'm destined to win this tournament. If not this tournament, some tournament sometime soon. If you can't get yourself motivated to to be at your best and and try and achieve things for your wife and kids, then I mean, you're never going to get motivated in any other way. Be there. Be there. Yes. Back in Toronto, 
I'm still trying to make my 500 bucks a day. Running a successful poker room is all about keeping the seats filled with players like me. Yeah, a little north in Plaza. Okay, okay, as soon as, soon as you get to around Plaza, or come inside the Plaza, you see one? Game runners make their money by collecting a rake from the players, a commission from every winning hand. In one night, a table full of players can easily generate a couple thousand dollars for the house. I meet Lawrence, who runs his game in the East End. He rents space out of a commercial building. Lawrence pays the rent in cash, so the landlord turns a blind eye to the all-night gambling. He bought the club from another owner. For $40,000, Lawrence got the tables, chips, security cameras, TVs, and his personal favorite, the club's name, Cincinnati Kid. This move comes from a movie made in 1965 called Cincinnati Kid. Uh, the actor, I think, was uh, Steve McQueen, I think. I've seen the movie many, many times, so I tried to learn it. Okay. Uh, this is uh, my club. That's the security. This is, uh, we call it a Scala or table, which uh, people, they love it. They, they waste time right, right here, and they enjoy it. That's a screen TV. Uh, mostly they go uh, for uh, a sports channel because they like to bet. Some of them, they come with the plan. Some, they don't. Just they love to, to shoot. This is a poker table. This is a poker table. Uh, they sit uh, behind the, the table, right here. And they enjoy their time. The people who make a plan, they win. The people, they don't have a plan. They follow those kind of people. So they are a loser. So in real life, you better have a plan. When you're winning at the tables, it's easy to dream. You're making money and you feel unstoppable. My plan is to win enough at poker so we don't have to worry about the bills or when I'm going to get my next job. I don't need to make a million bucks. I just want to be able to walk into a club or catch a plane to Vegas and make enough money to keep the family going. A few miles from the Vegas Strip, I meet a former grinder from Canada who's managed to take his game all the way to the top. Daniel, I've been looking around and thinking that this is definitely not Canada. <laughs> yeah, definitely not Canada. Can you tell me where we are? We are in Las Vegas, Summerlin to be exact, in my backyard, working on my alternate putter. Hey, finally made one. Yeah, this is my green that I got built. It's a Jack Nicklaus sign green that helps with chipping and putting. And since I not only gamble at poker, gamble a little at golf, having a good like short game is kind of important. So. Every once in a while, I'll come out here and just hit some putts and do some chipping.
Well, the way I did it, well, the way I got here to this point in Las Vegas and successful was very different than the way that it should be done today. I did it grinding. You know, I, I did it starting out in poker clubs in Toronto, uh, these charity casinos, and then taking my shots in Vegas playing in bigger games and, until, you know, finally I, I uh, struck gold in a tournament, the World Series of Poker. I'd already had some success up until that point, but then uh, slowly but surely just started to move up in limits and uh, poker got hot. I got hot at the right time and, you know, through that I was able to make some uh, money on the business side of poker as well. Well, I've been uh, on the road for a little while now. After the World Series of Poker in the fall, things start to move out towards Europe. And so I was uh, just on like a trip to Vienna, had to do a PR stop in Romania, a little bit of fun in Amsterdam, some fun in LA, and then back home. Um, I was in four countries in five days at one point, a lot of different planes. Uh, it worked out. I came fourth in the EPT Vienna, paid like 170,000 euro. So it paid for the trip and some. But uh, yeah, aside from that, it's just a busy time. You know, I'm home for about a week, then off to Barcelona, back for a few days and off to Sydney, Australia, get a couple weeks off for Christmas and then head out to uh, the Bahamas for the PokerStars Caribbean Adventure Tournament, which is a big one every January. For me, poker is all about risk, odds, and skill. Luck is for slot machines and bingo, games of chance. But when it comes to life, I'll take all the luck I can get. My wife tells me the unexpected news. We've got a second baby on the way. It's another high-risk pregnancy. Four years ago, when we decided to start a family, our doctor warned us that my wife's biological clock wasn't just ticking, it was chiming. Three miscarriages later, our little girl was born. My daughter is the luckiest thing that's ever happened to me. Now, we need to get lucky again. Danny's close to winning the $300,000 tournament when he's dealt the second best hand in poker. Pocket Cowboys, a monster hand. Odds predict that you'll see Pocket Kings once every 221 deals. With these two cards, it's almost never wrong to go all in. All in. All in. Unless, of course, someone, like this guy, turns over pocket aces. When that happens, odds say that you're going to lose 81% of the time. If Danny doesn't see a king hit the table, he'll be eliminated from the tournament. If you believe in luck, this is what it looks like at the poker table. Ridiculous. No. I'll take it though. I'm sure you it's your pleasure to do that. You you always know that. Yeah, it's all him. Yeah, but I gotta get lucky sometimes. One lucky person out there will win $100,000 in tournament buy-ins, a furnished condo on the Las Vegas. I get a call from Andre. 
he tells me about this online contest. It's a reality show that's going to bring 25 poker players from around the world to compete in Las Vegas. Andre wants me to help him make an audition video. Basically, a whole new life. Okay, so what's the plan? Like to show your your like lifestyle to these these people who are choosing this. This yeah, basically, and let them know that you know that I'm basically a degenerate and I do it every day. I don't know. What do you think? What, what what's your idea? Do you have any ideas? I think you have to sort of address the camera. Like we'll put the camera on a tripod, and you address the camera. You say, listen, this is this is this is who I am. This is what I do. Okay, ready and action. Hello, my name is Andre Abacat. And I'm here to tell you why I should be the next Victory Poker Pro. I'm telling you right now, besides the fact that I want to get the hell out of Canada, besides the fact that I'm sick of beavers, besides the fact that I'm sick of casinos in Canada that make you wait for a seat, and they move you here, and they tell you, no, this is not good, and that's not special, and no, you can't move over here. You know, you go to Vegas, you just grab a seat. Seat open, I'll take it. This seat open, I'll take it. I want to shoot. Take my money! Why can't you take my money? Yeah, this is where it all happens. This is where uh, I take people's money, people take my money. Mostly they take my money, but uh, that's where you guys come in. See, I want to take this to a professional level. I need a lot of professionals around me, and I would love if you guys picked me, because I know for a fact we can make Victory Poker bigger than it already is. I mean, I need this so much. As you can see, I need a condo, I need a car, I need a watch. I need, like, you know what I mean? I need a new life! My new life starts at 10 p.m. and ends when I win enough to go home or when I bust out, whichever comes first. Last night, I went to Cincinnati Kid. The parking lot was empty and the doors were locked. I find out that there hasn't been a game there in days. Turns out, the landlord has locked Lawrence out of his own club. Lawrence tells me that his landlord wants an extra 6,000 in cash. Until then, he can't get any of his stuff. any reason change the lock he's telling me I gotta I gotta give him six thousand dollars extra he put it under this uh, excuse because I haven't paid the guy the other months I don't know where where did he figure it out any 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 right mind uh, landlord won't let it go this far two, three months not paying. This guy blackmailing me, and he knows why. I'm not going to give him a penny, right, unless uh, he comes to uh, right mind. I'm a gambler. I don't rip people off. But this guy is not gambler, but he's ripping people off. That's a difference between me and the, 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 the landlord. And uh, the law protect this kind of fucking people. Not, not normal and regular people like me, they want to survive. Danny's back from the tournament after falling short of first prize. After covering his expenses, he came home with $7,000 profit. Hi, Nicole. It's Dan Kilpakis. How are you? Um, the, the payment that I needed to make for that check that 
that came back uh, was made on Friday at your at your branch. They have the payment. Um, I, I need I need to see if you could release the hold on my on my account. Can you give me a call back once you once you have it sorted out with her? Thanks, Nicole. Appreciate it. Playing five games right now. Uh, it's a little bit of a mixture. The bottom right screen is a hundred dollar double or nothing sit and go. Top five players double their their money. Uh, left side of the screen is a one two no limit cash game. Excuse me for a sec. Sorry, my I got this. Hello. Okay, so it's, it's it. I can take that out anytime. That's awesome. Thanks so much, Nicole. Appreciate it. All right. You were talking about the relationship you have with your wife and how she, you know, supports your play. Can you talk a bit about that? Yeah, no, she doesn't, she's actually supports me. She's actually the one that, that you know, pushes me forward and she's very supportive. So uh, there's, there's some days where, um, you know, just like work, I should go and, and play live or I should play online, especially live, and she, uh, I don't feel like going. And she'll say, like, well, you know what, you really should go. And uh, I'll turn around and go, yeah, you're right, I should go for a couple of days. And... Um, yeah, so she's she's almost almost like a poker coach at times. She she helps helps get me motivated and keeps me going. So uh, that helps a lot. She's not thrilled with me playing cards for a living. Uncomfortable with the risks I'm taking. Yeah. Where can we put a, a swing? I can't carry. No. The late nights and unreliable income are taking their toll. And now, with a second baby on the way, I'm feeling even more pressure to do well at the tables. But getting dealt pocket jacks <laughs> helps. <laughs> yeah, true sounds of a pro. Oh, it worked, bro. 30. We got one bird that calls. <laughs> Why don't you just stick to Hollywood, buddy, to directing, okay? I'll leave the poker for us. <laughs> I know. He's so fun. A third jack on the flop means I can make a lot of money with his hand. But I gotta be careful that too much and Andre will fold. Oh God, Matt, 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 why do you do this, bro? Why do you even have to pretend? When the turn hits, I'm confident my set of jacks is crushing Andre. I'm all in. All in. All in. Ah, what a fucking beautiful turn for you. Like, not good enough to lay this down. I should lay this down. Snap full, but I have a nine for a draw. Nine, bring a nine. Well, nine. Rocky, a set of jacks? Yeah, I know you have a set of jacks. I'm not even surprised. A nine or a queen? Nine or a queen? Nine or a queen? Nine or a queen. When a blank hits on the river, I've made my quota for the night. It's your night tonight, bro. It's your night tonight. Yeah, soak it in, buddy. Soak in the glory, buddy. A big part of poker is the bluff. The ability to ignore your cards and play the player. If you're good, you can take down a pot when you're holding nothing. Lawrence goes to the police to lodge a complaint against his landlord. He knows the law can't help him if they find out he's been running an illegal poker game, so he tells them he runs a social club and left his medication there. Hi. 
uh, just I was at the landlord, right? He changed the lock, right? He didn't give me any reason, just he said, you owe me $6,000. I'm not going to advise no, you. I know, money. I know, I'm, no, I know, no, no, I'm not saying that. I can't get in because I got the stuff. I, I have my medication there. I got to get, take, uh, take, no, take I was my. Told it was, you're renting it as a commercial. Yeah, it is commercial, but still I have stuff there. That's a personal, nothing to do. This guy is illegally, right, taking advantage of me. If this is kind of, you feel that. Like you're extortion. Being, you're being mistreated then, I mean. Yes. Uh, That's illegally. Hopefully you guys can find at least a common ground for the medication. I'll let you guys figure it out here. Diego, yeah. I went to the police today. You told them uh, I owe you $6,000. $1,000. So all the, pay all the payment, you receive them cash, right? He knows I can't, I can't say anything. So he wants, he wants $6,000. Yeah, I'm not going to do that. Everybody, everybody, when it comes to money, they want to grab something. This is, a, this is a, one of them, grabber. That's the kind of shit I'm in. It's very hard, very hard, very, very hard. It's 7 a.m., and I've been playing poker all night with Danny. We're on our way to the casino to play more cards. Pumpkin, are you still sleeping? Mm -hmm. Well, it's time to get up. Dling, dling, dling. When Daddy gets Daddy gets home, we'll go out and do something fun, okay? Okay, bye, honey. Have a great day, okay? Dad loves you. Mwah. Can't start my day without saying good morning to the girls. I play poker for a living. It's all I do. I don't have any other source of income. All my income is poker related. And I love to do what I do. In June of 1991, um, my gambling got really bad. I was drinking and doing drugs and, you know, a little bit of everything. And uh, I decided to go to rehab in Philadelphia for three weeks for my gambling. And. Uh, that that seemed to work, you know. I uh, came back. I never gambled. I was going to Gamblers Anonymous meetings four or five times a week, and I didn't gamble for about a year. And anybody who knows anything about compulsive gambling knows that once you become a compulsive gambler, it's very difficult, if not almost impossible, to go back to regular gambling. And nowadays, I. You know, I seem to have conquered that part of my life. I, I'm fortunate enough to be able to play poker for a living. I'm not, I'm not a high stakes player, but I'm able to make a living by just thinking about what I work for. And that's my, my wife and two girls at home and my oldest daughter that doesn't live at home with us. And that keeps me motivated. It makes me, you know, makes me go out and do what I need to do. I'm at, at your office, waiting. We are there anyway, waiting. It's been two weeks since Lawrence was locked out of his club. The landlord still refuses to give him the contents of the unit. It's $40,000 of poker gear, tools of his trade, Lawrence tells me that the landlord is planning on selling all his stuff to a competing club owner. It's a gambling place. Mm -hmm. Landlord knows it. He was blackmailing me, okay. right? If I didn't pay him off, 
not only rent, something else, he was asking me. Do you have a proof for that? Yes, I do have a proof. That's why I want to, as, as my lawyer, call the cops. Tonight, they're going to have a game in my place with my stuff. I don't want to gamble with my stuff. Okay, that fully understand. Yes, you can access the police directly and say, this is what he's doing it. But make sure what you are asking the police, don't put yourself in soup saying that is a gambling place, so I was gambling No, too. don't say that. No, I said they using it as a gambling now. Okay, I'm done. You fully understand, right? I'm done. I give you something. I yeah, shut, shut that one down, please. Okay. Okay, I appreciate it anyway. Right. Thank you very I much. I know you did your your best. Yes. Thank so. you. Okay. So tell me what happened up there. Shit happened. What happened? Everybody wants a piece of something. Nothing happened. That's a, that's a light. Lost the 40 ground so far. four hours of sleep, not even. Yeah, it's gonna be in Saga though, if you wanna. Yeah, so I, that's what I'm saying, I don't know if, uh, like eight, I'll probably leave here in a couple hours, something like that, I can meet you up. If you want, I can give you a ride. Can you have you know, a, two, don't worry, we're not gonna throw oh, nothing. Yeah. Leftover, we'll stay. I know, I'm just. Papa. Come on, Papa. This is First of all, I have to paint something. Yeah. Go on. A degenerate mm -hmm. is a person who does something and then hurts himself in the process. That's a degenerate. Really? Really. I'm gonna call you on that. I'm gonna look up the word you degenerate. Me. So it's a it's a person who does something and hurts himself in the process. Right. To gain something? Right. Or just because to, to gain yeah. something. No. Oh, just does whatever, no. whatever it is. A drug addict okay. is a degenerate. Okay. Okay. A person who plays poker yeah. is yeah. far away from being a degenerate. Yeah. Really? Really. Okay. He likes it. It's we support passion. him, as I said. It's beautiful. We're happy for him. I support him as long as he doesn't go overboard. That's all. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So you're good. For now, at least. Well, for now, you don't have a mortgage. You don't have kids. You're not married. What are you worried about? I'm worried about going to Vegas and putting everything on red. It's on a well, how do you I'll never do that anyway, because I know you. I know you. No, no, this no. is a joke. I, I know. know. He likes to joke also. He, he likes the jokes. He's very funny. He, he should be funny. a comedian right. rather than mm. playing poker. Actually, he would make a great, That's great says comedian. In Donald, but I, someone that I, I already have... told you, you would make the greatest comedian. Oh, my God. Okay. So I I'll go to Yuck Yucks that. every Friday, like your friend Howie Mandel. I'm talking about something legit, though, not dreams in La La Land. Like, I'm gonna become an astronaut slash cowboy. <laughs> and I think he would make a better comedian than a poker player, for sure. Ups, he, he's even making us laugh. Well, but actually, he's a better poker game than a comedian. No, no, I think he's a better comedian than a poker player. <laughs> wow. Harley, slow down. <laughs> Come on. Okay, okay. Degenerate. Holy, slow down. The reason I say I, I qualify myself as a and I, I know what you're saying, you live in a nice house, oh, two beautiful dogs, whatever. You're like, it's the way I lead my life, it's my lifestyle, okay? For example, I don't, at the age of 25, I should be having a calendar or, you know, writing, like, you know, doctor appointment, Friday, write it down. So, no, I live life day to day. 
That's why for you, you feel like you're the jackpot every time you get to do an interview with me. And I don't mean because of who I am, I mean because you finally got in touch with me. You know, instead of you calling me, and, and think about this, think about the things that you, that you do, right? Instead of you calling me to set up an appointment, what do you do? I go to you show up at my spot and hopefully you bump into me. That, my friend, is why I'm a degenerate. Harley, sit, sit, sit. It's a documentary. People are gonna think you're crazy. Sit, come on, Harley. I'm, I'm dreaming right now if I'm gonna have a family in the next like two, three years. You know, the only way I can have a family is if I trade in poker. <laughs> okay, guys. Oh, there's mommy. Audrey, look at there's mommy. Audrey, mommy's home. blood test today, so I'm a little cold later today, yeah, but then I have to go back in two days and have another blood test. And they'll measure the amount of hormones in my system, and, uh, and that will tell if it's like going well, if the hormones double, but it's 50-50, but it's man. It's really high. I thought I could handle risk, but this is different. 50-50 is just a flip of a coin. For poker players, risk is a relative thing. After eight hours at the casino, Danny is back in his hotel room gambling online. Even decades after rehab, just sitting down to play can be dangerous. Right now I'm playing uh, the championship for online poker on Poker Stars. I'm playing the, uh, the two stud events. Don't ask me what I drink, just pour anything. I drink anything, the same thing. You know, and this is gonna get me ready for, for, for Vegas, man. I'm gonna like be totally peaked if I can get a piece here, like right now. So, so a best case scenario, cash-wise, what are you hoping to get from this? Well, because it's such a small tournament, first prize in the 320 buy-in is only 17,000. Um, last year was a little over 40, but 17,000 would set me up good for, for just in time for the World Series of Poker in, in Las Vegas. I'm also playing a $33 tournament, which is a much weaker field. Um, first prize is just under 10,000 in that, and but the field there is 1,700. It don't matter if it's a 100-player field or if it's a 1,000-player field. I always feel like I can win, and, and I will win when it comes to seven-card stud. I think the only thing that prevents me from not winning tournaments in seven-card stud is bad luck. So right now, there's, there's 203 play, uh, 291 players. I'm 203rd out of 291. But no panicking here. I know I will get it back. I usually lose to two pair here. So this guy's probably got two pair, kings something. I'm hoping he's got kings only. Let's check it out. This is playing for a third of my stock. I need this pot. Kings and sevens. As usual, my aces lose to kings, which is really sad, but so common. Anybody else would panic. This is my game. I'm just, I stay level, level, level. 
and pick my spots, and I get my money in good, and you know what? I will make a comeback in this tournament. Somehow, some way. The only way you can lose money online overall is if you're, in my opinion, is if you're a horrible player. You can sit there and blame it on bad beats, this and that, whatever, all day long, but you're only gonna lose it if you're a bad, you know, like a real bad player. Because there's so many bad players. I don't care if it's today, next week, next month, online, there's money to be made. But you gotta be able to exploit those bad players. If you got bad player selection, you're just playing hands the same way with every player, I'm sorry, man, you're not fit to play online. But I'm able to pick those things off, totally sober, or after 20 drinks. I know who's weak and who's strong. I'm a not bad guy. I cruise around the law. I don't break the, I don't break the law. I run the things for the excitement. Uh, the reason I, I gone forward, uh, not 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 money, not those only stuff. I uh, I spend a, a great deal of the money on that place. It's not that. It's uh, uh, about the, the, they took away the excitement and the the the, the things. Mostly I love. Uh, mostly I think that's my desire to 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 go on. So they took away that part. So they hurt me in this area, which I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna take it easily. Uh, so that's the reason I gone to cops. It 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 makes you uh, seriously feel shit. Uh, so then I said, okay, right? You guys wanna take away what? Uh, I, what my life is all about, right? It's nothing to do with the money. That desire, that's, uh, that thing. Uh, I lost it in time, uh, some place, right? It's not with me, so uh, I have to take it back. Well, it's gonna be very difficult to get your stuff back, all the poker tables and the poker chips. Mm -hmm. But I, I don't know. I think that you might. You, I mean, you'll probably stop them playing there mm -hmm. with the police. Mm -hmm. So let's bet. Hundred bucks, if I get my stuff back. A hundred bucks if you get your stuff back. I pay you a hundred bucks. Yeah. If you don't, if, you if I don't, hundred. And if you don't, you pay me a hundred. Yeah. Let's make a bet. Okay, I'll take that okay. bet. Okay. hundred bucks. Okay. I get a hundred bucks. Because without the bedding, right, <laughs> there is no excitement. <laughs> <coughs> we made it official. I survived a lot of things. I'm going to survive this one. King won't win it. Anything else is like it. I'm not sure. Yeah. Come to Papa, baby. You got it. What? What the fuck did that guy have? Holy fuck. Yeah, I lost it. I like hit my best card. The nut straight. This guy have a full house. That's ugly.
Hi, this is Tatiana phoning from Dr. Sierra's office. This message is for Cornelia. I'm calling you with the result of the test from today, the pregnancy test, and the result came back really positive. Uh, the level is 9,835, which is a really good level. And I want you to book your first pregnancy ultrasound. Uh, it should be um, tomorrow. If they don't have a time for that tomorrow, maybe you can do it on uh, Monday, okay? After you do your ultrasound that day, you need to wait for the doctor. When a mirage appears, you know that it can't be real. You know that when you get closer, it will disappear. Despite knowing all this, you're still drawn in. I can still remember the first time I landed in Vegas and just walked the strip and thinking, wow, this is like a fantasy land. It didn't seem real. And I remember like after that first week feeling like I never really wanted to leave. It just has that perfect appeal of like, Serenity, action, calm. Well, a typical day for me depends where I am. You know, uh, I, if I'm at home, a typical day is waking up around 11 a.m., having some breakfast my assistant makes, a little protein shake, and go play golf all day with some friends, and, uh, you know, pretty much do it all again the next day. Tell me, what is the most important thing to you? As far as? Life. What's the most important thing in your life? I guess the most important thing in my life is freedom. I think I always um, was pretty, was like a, so I just never really liked having a boss. I don't like people telling me what to do. And I like the freedom to be able to do whatever I want to do, and poker afforded me that. I do that. I'm safe now. I don't really have to worry about risk. I don't have any financial fears. I haven't ever really, even when I didn't have any money. If I were to lose everything tomorrow, I wouldn't even be worried about it because I know that I could go back on the grind and I'd build a bankroll and it would actually be kind of fun. Good afternoon, Las Vegas WKLB with you this afternoon on a sunny 96 degrees in the city. Oh my goodness, this is the big weekend. Everyone in town for the big event. Millions are up for grabs. I'm saying millions because when Hi. Hi, baby. Thank you for that card that got you yesterday. Yeah. You know, that was really special, honey. Thank you so much for making that for me. For Father's Day. All right. So we'll see you in a couple. I haven't played yet, honey. I'm gonna play. I'm gonna play now in a couple hours. Okay. Listen, listen. Dad's gotta go. Okay. I just call to say I love you. Okay. And Daddy will talk to you again tomorrow. You have a great sleep. Okay. The best players in the world are in this room. It's a four-day event, and to win first prize, Danny has to beat out 830 players. He's hoping that this is the tournament that will finally change everything for him and his family. So far, so good. We started with uh, 4,500 chips. Got a great draw for table. I got uh, John Diagostino on my table. He's a top pro and an online uh, full tilt pro. Uh, pro. 
outside of him, really, the table is soft, man, real, real soft. They got about 9,000 right now, which is above average. I think the average is probably about 6,800. And, uh, you know, I could easily have 15,000 if I didn't have a couple of bad beats on this table. I've had about 15 drinks. I'm having fun out there. I'm relaxed. It's going real good, man. You know, I, I feel great about tonight. There's absolutely no reason I can't go in tomorrow with huge chips for, for, for tomorrow and dominate tomorrow. So I want to make good business decisions while I'm here. I want to eat decent. I want to sleep decent. I want to play decent. I want to play long hours because the top pros play long hours, and I'm sure all of them can't be thrilled about playing long hours. You know, I want to force my body to play those hours when I don't want to. So I got to keep myself motivated. I got to keep myself non-distracted. And I think if I can do that, I think really there's, there's money for me on this trip. Control? Well, anybody that knows me well enough knows that I play, I play just as well, if not even better, when I've been drinking. I, you know, it makes for a good time. It doesn't bore me. I got, I got something to do. Uh, it's, it, I think it helps keep me patient. And uh, I feel like I play, I play even better when I drink. So this is not a no-limit game where what, getting drunk and making one big mistake costs you all your chips. It's a limit game. Uh, I think I have such a big edge I can afford a few mistakes in this tournament. Yeah, basically, uh, we had a landlord tenant board, and uh, Mr. Lawrence Taney was, rep I'm representing for Mr. Lawrence Taney as a, he's a tenant, I'm a legal representative, and uh, we were arguing about his locked out uh, from the unit, and uh, we are trying to get him to access. Lawrence's legal counsel tells me that his case was a difficult one. He called it a long shot. The court has heard both sides and will make a decision within a few weeks. Until then, everything Lawrence owns is in the hands of his landlord. San Diego, and I will be the next Victory Poker Pro. This is the opportunity of a lifetime for me, and I am the one you are looking for. Hey guys, how's it going? My name's Dean Simmons, and all I do is play poker. I should become the next Victory Poker Pro. And could surely use some time off work. Just go to www.victorypoker.net. Straight, bro. Okay, then look for my video. At the bottom, click on, there's gonna, you're gonna see a hundred thousand dollar link at the top. Click on it. Then you're gonna see my video at the bottom. Click on my video and vote for me. Hello, my name is Andre Abacat, and I'm here to tell you why I should be the next Victory Poker Pro. I didn't lie to you. Did I lie to you the first time? Okay, please do it, man. I gotta get in there, please, bro. All right, man. Thank you. I need good, smart, intelligent professionals around me to take my game up to the next level. Shit, that shit. Yes. Don't floor on me, Marcus. Don't floor on me. I just sent out all the text message for, uh, for people to vote for me for that victory poker situation, the contest, so I'm gonna mute it because I'm sure I'm gonna get texts now. Please, just please, get me out of Canada. Please, one time, make me a pro, and you could do it. Victory poker, one time, please. Sure, bro. Oh, Mark, your money, I love, oh, I love your money, bro. Oh, I love your money. Going to represent a poker site, to represent like a crew is kind of like, would be my dream. Because then I know it's once you're in, that's it. It's you're in. You know what I mean? Like there's, there's only money to be made. Plus they have so many like, oh my god, I don't want to talk about all the Playboy models and all the like. These guys are partying every day, and that's, you know, that's actually what I've been lacking because I've been playing so much. And I guess they know how to balance it. They know how to you know play poker, poker time, and they know how to party. And uh, I don't know I'm just dying for that. I just I don't even know. It's too good to be true. But you know, my I have a cousin that tells me not to. Not to get my hopes up too much. Like, if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, just keep on grinding, you know? But, uh, yeah, that's about it.
The World Series of Poker is about as far as you can get from the grinder clubs back home. A seat at the table costs as much as $50,000. A financial backer is covering all of Danny's expenses. In return, that backer owns 50% of everything Danny wins. Ray, what's going on, buddy? No, today's final day, bro. There's only 24 left. I'm, I'm 11th place out of 24 players. So I've, right, as of right now, I've cashed for 7,000. So 3,500 for you as of right now. So, um, but first place is 268, man. So yeah, I'm gonna go down and play in about a half hour. Uh, man, I wish you were here. I'd watch final table two, man, if I get there. Hey, what are you doing? How are the girls? Yeah. Well, here's my here's my plan. If I finish top three, which I'm which I'm hoping I'll I'll do, and I which I think I can do, um, there's another horse event that starts tomorrow. I want you guys to fly in at the at the on the last day of that horse tournament. Um, and the, and the girls will have a, a great time here. Like, the weather's perfect. It's not even like it was last year. It's like, it's 90s, but it's breezy. It's, it's so nice. All right, give the girls a big kiss for me, and I'll touch base. I'll send you a text later. Love you, too. Okay, thanks. I know. I will win. All right, see ya. All right. Only six wins. Okay, thank you very much. Check okay, let's see. Straight, straight. Well, I have a Back in Canada, Lawrence's verdict is finally in. Oh, come on, Khan. I got a high, high pocket. Queens. They decided in favor of his landlord. Holy oh, shit, man. All of Lawrence's legal options are now closed. Fuck, see, I have no fucking log to play this game. If you're gonna play poker for a living, you gotta be able to survive the bad beats. Every grinder goes through a period when he's down. I've been losing at the tables lately. 500 here, 300 there, enough to make me question the idea of easy money. At home, things are good. The baby is due to arrive the day after Audrey's second birthday. We're 10 weeks in, and the doctor tells us that our chance of a successful pregnancy have jumped to 80%. Hello, this is Victory Poker Pro Antonio Esfandiari. Today's winner is Andre from Canada. Andre, congratulations. I really liked your video. So congrats once again and welcome. Cal, what are you saying, dog? Yo, man, what are you saying, man? I made it in, bro. Then I go to my room, I'm like, you know what? I'm probably not gonna win. Fuck it, I don't even need it. You know what I mean? Like, I don't even need it. You're telling me you don't believe? I can't believe I'm gonna be on the show, man. Thank you. How will it change my life? Yeah. See, that's a funny question because what do you mean by it? It's not gonna change my life. It's gonna change my life in here. Yo, I don't do you read me? I am in the fucking contest, bro. That's all I want, bro. It's just, it's just to know that I fantasized about it. I wanted it so bad, and now it's gonna happen. I can't believe it, bro. I love it too. 
<laughs> bye, bro. Bye. I busted out of the uh, horse tournament in 11th, um, three spots off, off the final table finish. Picked up just under 13,000 for that finish. It's, uh, it's a bittersweet finish. I, uh, you know, I really felt like I could win that tournament and I, I took two bad beats right down the stretch uh, for huge pots. Otherwise, I, I definitely make the final table and where I would have finished then you know, would, have, would have remained to be seen. I don't understand why you feel bad about this. I mean, you've come here, you beat 800 players out, you, you've uh, won $10,000, you know, profit. Like, tell me why you feel bad about this. I, I, you know what, there's, it's not, I don't feel bad about it entirely. It's, it's a bittersweet finish. I, uh, you know, I feel great about the way I played the, the whole three days. I feel like in three days, I really can only recall one really hand that I, that could, I would like to take back and play differently that I, I feel like I misplayed. Um, you know, I, I, this is a disappointing finish knowing that you're that close to a quarter million dollars and, a, you know, a few breaks go my way and, you know, it changes my whole results. But finishing 11th was, was still disappointing um, because I know I could have had a better finish than that. My wife went for another ultrasound. They didn't give us a reason for the miscarriage. All they said was that the fetus wasn't viable. We've been through this before, but this feels different. Somehow, it feels worse. We knew it was risky. We knew what our chances were. But probability and odds don't mean much outside the poker room. I haven't heard from Lawrence in months. His club Cincinnati Kid is finally reopened, but not with Lawrence running it. His landlord sold all the poker equipment to the new tenant. You've had a couple bad uh, breaks in the last six months. Your club Cincinnati Kid was taken over by somebody else. Mm -hmm. And I've seen you lose some money here and there. Mm -hmm. You get attacked by a crazy man at the club. It sounded very serious. You were taken away in an ambulance and... Uh, no, it wasn't that much. It wasn't like that. You weren't taken away in an ambulance? <sighs> I don't say it that way. The guy couldn't control himself. Uh, wasn't me only. He was throwing things around, so... Anybody could have get hurt. If you want to put the bad luck, so it was me. Use it this way. Because I didn't move. I didn't move. I should have moved. I didn't want to move. I didn't feel to move. I let the guy to hit the target. I made that decision. To use it as a bad luck, you can use it. But that was my own decision. I take a punch, good. That's what it comes down to? Yeah, I take a punch, good.
Sometimes, accepting that the mirage is gone is harder than you think. My wife and I are told that the chance of us having another baby is now less than 5%. It's 10 a.m. Sunday morning, and you've been playing poker all night. You must be exhausted. I actually, I'm in second second win mode right now. Uh, I'm out apple picking with my girls right now, and uh, I feel fine. I, you know, I, I will probably get a three hour nap, probably from three till six, and then I'll go out and do what I do every night, play cards. The fact that my dream and my goals are coming true, that's just proving to me there's no I want to be. Just shut your mouth, don't say it, think it, and do it. Go out there and do it. And I'm telling you right now, I will be the next Victory Poker Pro. I will be. I will be it. Part of life, it's an adventure. A part of life, for sure, it's a risk. <laughs> <laughs> Without risk and adventure, life is not life. The key to being a winning grinder is knowing the right time to cash in your chips and go home. Yesterday, Audrey turned two years old. Yeah.